And we're on to episode seven. We're on to a really juicy topic now, which is calculating your equity. Juicy topic. Yeah, we're getting to the nitty gritty at this point. Um, so do you want to cover off what we're going to be talking about today? Yeah, definitely. Level? So uh, we're going to look at a few factors that, that affect how you calculate equity. I mean, I saw a great uh, rich, rich Reddit post on this where Ooh. someone was asking, you know, how does one calculate their equity without kind of considering some of the other questions that kind of come before that decision. Um, so we're going to go into what those questions are today and that is kind of what your deposit contributions are, um, who's going to be making what repayments towards the loan, uh, who's going to be supporting with the fixed costs, the variable costs, what your living arrangements look like, and then also, as a result, how you're going to share any profit, which is kind of coming to that final conclusion of, therefore, your equity split looks like this, or we have a different arrangement that isn't related to equity. So really chunky kind of um, few points we've got to get through. Yeah, but, right. um, got we've, time. Yeah, we've, we're, we're here for it. So we have kind of used our own personal circumstances, but maybe we'll shake things up because I think neither of us ended up actually giving away equity in our, um, in our first purchases. First purchase, yeah. I did um, split equity with my partner, so I might refer to that at some, at some point in time. But maybe for, for the fun of it, you can consider, you know, what if it's you and I, Deej? What if we're going in? Like, how much can okay. you bring to the table? This is hypothetical. Scary. We don't actually have this cash. <laughs> or maybe we don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much like you got? It. Like that. All right, I'm putting in 50k. 50k? Yeah, I'm gonna hold there. I'll double that. I'm feeling wealthy. Ooh, okay. <laughs> so I'll do 100k then. Um, right. All right. But even at 150k, we're probably, you know, we're a bit short. We're a bit short. Yeah. Um, we might have to. Let's bring in producer Mike. Producer, producer Mike, how much, Mike. How much have bring? you got for us? We'll call it 50. We'll match DJ. Match 50. DJ. Quarter that gives in. us around 200. That's an, it's a nice sum to work with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's a good 20% kind of deposit yeah, for, sounds a, about right. for a buck of a home. So <laughs> so let's let's run with that scenario and we'll talk about some of the some of the questions and therefore how you should split equity. So we've all kind of loosely agreed and started, I think, in the easiest place, which is what do we have at a deposit level to contribute. So immediately if that's how things were landing, you would be sort of thinking, okay, well, Amy gets 50%, yucks, and you get 25% <laughs> and Patrusa might get 25%. Um, to kind of sum up to that 100% share. But then you need to drop down to a next question, which is what are your repayments going to be like? And I think for the most part, if you are actually co-purchasing and owning the property, um, and it's not a parent going in, you might actually be thinking about all making repayments. So let's say we are all making repayments. The best way to make those repayments would be either to do so in relation to the equity share uh -huh. or in relation to your the outstanding amount after the deposit. Uh -huh. <laughs> the top was going My dungaree down. was undone, sorry. I'll can I'll just continue back Mayday. on. But I we read could it. have had a boob a nipple slip. Well no, slip. I've got a turtle neck. Janet on. Jackson. Right, we're still rolling. So oh, we're still going rolling. on to yeah. So we're going. <laughs> we're back on. Good. We just we're paused back. the the episode we're for a moment because my dungaree came came yeah. down. I've so, got a turtleneck underneath. So yeah. Just but just to continue on that point, I guess like from the repayments perspective, mm -hmm. generally you would then go, okay, well we can either we can leave it at 50, 25 and 25 percent and we can just manage the deposit in that way and we can say that anything else, the 80 percent, is split three ways right. and then you can either agree that the people that put in more, i.e. in this case me, because I put an extra 25 percent in, would get that 25 percent out first at the sale of the property, so that 25% first and then the rest of the profit would be split three ways between us. Or you can, if, if we want to make things more complex, you guys could make more repayments and I could make less repayments so that we all end up having a three-way split. 
So there's a couple of things that you, you know, it gets really complicated really quickly, but you need to make decisions around how you want to contribute and what you want to walk away with, and, and that's kind of the second question around the repayments. The next piece is considering your costs. So if you are, I think, in particular, the fixed costs are the ones that relate to property ownership. So you can't not pay for fixed costs and own the property. So that is your rates, your insurance, like you're, you're actually not even able to get lending unless you insure property because of you know, the bank's risk appetite. So insurance is a, is a required cost. Obligation. Yeah, yeah, and maintenance is you know, required to, to keep the house kind of performing. And so some of those fees you'll agree to split in accordance to kind of your equity or your contribution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so with my partner, we were 60 40 on our purchase, and so those fixed costs were 60 40. Yeah. Um, so in our case, it would be me paying, if I want to maintain 50% of the house, 50%, and you guys would each pay 25%. Are you right with that, Mike? <laughs> I've got, I've got, a, got thumbs a thumbs up. up. Yeah. Positive. He does deal in thumbs most of the time too, so that yeah, yeah. feels right. Yeah. Oh, we're um, outing him. We're outing him today. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Um, so essentially moving into that, I guess, next question is about variable costs. So these costs don't come as a requirement with owning a home. It's more so living in that property. Um, and then obviously you're getting the benefit of living in that property. So we might consider and say, you know what, we don't want to live with Mike. <laughs> so we're going to both live in this property and Mike's investing, but he's not going to live there. So a common... Yeah. <laughs> A common way to deal with that might be that we say, well, we're going to pay, you know, for the the variable costs, but we might also say that we're going to pay for a share of maintenance because we're living in there. There's different ways that you can carve it off, but for the most part, the variable costs like power, net, and, you know, any of those will be shared by those living in the house. And the next question is if we're living in the house and Mike's not, we're getting a benefit of living in that property. So we need to consider how we manage that. And it will probably be nine times out of 10, the best way um, is to actually pay market rent. So you and I pay each a rent amount towards living in that property, which Makes might sense. be you know, $280 quite easily in Auckland. Yep. Um, and then any outstanding amount of the mortgage would be split in accordance to our share. So say we have you know, $560 come off the mortgage repayments, which is our rent, and then there's another, you know, thousand um, dollars that we need to pay. We would split that three ways. So I would pay for half of that, five hundred dollars. You would pay two hundred and fifty, and Mike would be two hundred and fifty as well. So you've got to think about that living arrangement piece as well. And these are questions that you know we're, we're kind of trying to tease out here today. But all of the decision making around this is captured in our or an agreement tool on the Slice platform, so you can go nice. and have a look and make some of those decisions before engaging with a lawyer, who will then help you, you know, agree on what that final share looks like. But the yep. final probably piece to consider then is based on all of these different contributions that you might make and the, and the decisions that you make. Yep. Yeah, it is moving into that equity split. So we've kept it quite simple today by saying we're actually going to try and meet that share of 50%, 25%, 25%. Therefore, even if someone had, you know, $120,000, like instead of 100, you might just actually say we're better to do it this way to keep things a bit easier. But you'll put in the deposit amount, you'll agree the repayments, and if they're going to be the same in accordance to your share, that's nice and easy. Um, and then you'll agree who's living in the home and the fixed and variable costs, and therefore you might just end up with that 50%, 25%, 25%. Uh -huh. But if someone is making more repayments over time, it might be that it's better to go with the arrangement of, okay, well, you can have the 25% that you put in out with some sort of, you know, interest rate or, you know, increase in value. Yeah. Like the extra 25% that I put in, for example, if yeah. we say, it, it might be easier for me to actually say, well, I'm going to, to keep things fair at the end and we want to split it three ways, we're going to just say that extra 25% is going to be pulled out first and it's going to look like, you know, the extra 50k that I put in right. plus some level of interest. So you could be like, 
let's say it ends up being 70k and I get to take that out first of the purchase and then we split everything three ways. Yeah, no, so that can be an option to, to kind of level things out if you want to. But if you are going to happily contribute in the same way according to your share, then that's fine. In terms of my partner and I, we just decided he's going to pay um, you know, more in terms of the deposit, but then we're going to split the repayments accordingly. So mm -hmm. therefore, the way that we've managed that is we've just kept things 60-40. So there's lots of different ways that you can shape it, and yeah, it really comes sure. down to what you're both happy with or if there's three of you, what you're all happy with, but you have to go through that decision analysis and make a call on how each of you are contributing before yeah. you agree on that equity split. All out on the table. Yeah, sure. and then yeah. when you when you consider kind of that next stage as well of what the equity split might be. Yeah, so what does that profit sharing look like? Yeah, like there can be yeah. different types of profit sharing as well, and this is something that is unique about some of our legals on, on the Slice platform, is how we actually enable different kind of relationships around that profit. So you, in theory, can just go, oh, we're splitting it in relation to our equity share. But you could do separate things like promise um, one party an extra, you know, a 10% of the increase in profit over time, which is actually what I did with my mum. I oh, sort of okay. said, you know, when we when I'm able to remove the guarantee, you're supported with sort of 10% of that. So I'm going to give you 10% of the uplift in value. So that can be separate to your equity share and separate to, you know, who's sitting on the title and is technically owning the property. So there are opportunities like that. Or profit sharing could be managed based on, you know, you just actually paying for a loan over here instead. So there's different ways to provide benefit to the other parties that doesn't always relate to equity. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you do that. hit the equity arrangement, hit the equity arrangement, <laughs> sounds very casual. Yeah. Um, but if you do if, if you do decide to go with the equity arrangement because of the way that you're contributing, normally you'll get an you know, a share of the profit based on the equity that you hold. So if it was ourselves and Mike, I would be getting fifty percent of the uplift in value and you would each be getting 25% of that uplift. Yeah, makes so sense. that's what you have to consider. But if someone's going to make different repayments or things like that, it might be that you say, well, actually, no, you can take the first your, your chunk of it out first and then we can split it in some different way. But you have to go through and consider those decisions first and that's what you can do on the, on the Slice platform as well. It helps you make those decisions so that when you engage with our lawyers, they can actually, you know, wrap that yeah. that into something that works for your circumstances. Mutual agreement. Mm. Yeah, and mm. I guess one last point on, on that topic as well is that with, with profit sharing, because you can actually either do it by equity or you can do it based on your contributions over time, there is the option to actually make adjustments to how you're sharing that profit based on how you're contributing over, you know, a five to ten to fifteen year period. Yeah, can you give some examples of what? Yeah, that so like? for example, if you lose your job, um, you know, God Oof, forbid, touch wood. Um, you wood. won't. You're amazing. Thank you. Um, but then it would be, you know, for me to potentially pick up some of your repayments or Mike to pick up some of those repayments for a period of time mm. and see that realised in the in the way that we're splitting profit or sharing our equity at the end. So there is opportunity for your contracts to kind of lean into the dynamics and the changes that happen over time and, and the Slice platform supports with that as well. So yeah, you have to think about, you know, today you might be able to contribute something, but yeah, money's not linear and life's not linear. So, true. so being able to, to, you know, as things change, negotiate, renegotiate and, and have that reflected in, in your equity share or however you agree to sort of benefit from your contributions. Yeah, yeah. So there's lots of different factors when it comes to understanding your equity share when purchasing a property. Can you maybe give us a taste as to what the most common scenario or scenarios you hear about? Yeah, I think for the most part people do base it off what their deposit is. So if you have a certain amount of deposit, as we started uh, earlier today with, you know, 50% me, 25% you, 25% producer Mike, then <laughs> then you just continue to make repayments in that way. Um, that can be really easy, provided that works for your circumstances. Or, yeah, commonly we see that it, it starts with that deposit. 
I think, yeah, it's been a, a chunky episode today, so you might have sure to kind of go back through and listen to that again and, and check out the tool and just, you know, digest some of those decisions that you need to make in your own yeah. time online. Yeah. Uh, but in summary, yeah, there's, before just agreeing arbitrarily to a split, you have to consider who's putting up what for the deposit, how are you splitting repayments, how are you paying for fixed costs, how are you paying for variable costs and who's living in, in the property, if any of you are, and then come to agreement on what that equity share looks like, or if you need to actually perhaps sort a different way to share and benefit from the profit. Yeah, awesome. Oh, that was great. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Deej. Thank you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs>